Hi, I'm Nathan Oakley and this is video log number 61. Christmas is a wonderful time. You get to travel around and see all of your family. You get to exchange gifts and find out why they still live on a globe. It's a marvellous time. So I covered the Foucault pendulum as that was my brother and sister-in-law's proof of the globe and that was in a former video log. And today I got to go and exchange gifts with my sister and brother-in-law and their daughter. And it was fantastic. They told me immediately about the ISS flyby on Christmas Day and they described it to me in great detail and for them that was proof of the globe. And I immediately jumped to the usual debunking which is to say that hey how is it lit? You know if this thing is at the scale they describe you know if it's an inch off the top of the globe to scale you know it's 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 nothing. It's not going to be able to see the sun if it's on the dark side of the planet. Now if you Couple that with the lines that it follows, bearing in mind that Mr. Thriven survives just in a massive debunking of the equator, uh, not the equator, the Terminator line. The actual flight path it takes is extremely suspicious. But more than that, you've got the actual fact that you can see it at all. This thing's flying at something like 21,000 metres or um, 80,000 feet, I think it is. I don't know the exact um, metric. But it should be at 400,000 metres, you know, it should, the ISS that is, be at a huge height. But as um, Matt Knight pointed out on Flat Earth UK 10, you've got pictures coming from satellites that look like they're about the same sort of focal length as something like what's in the background. Now that's actually, I think, a, a NASA branded U2 spy plane. But that's sort of what you get from what ESSA have sent up for satellites. Now, if you take the height that the ISS is supposed to be at, bearing in mind that it's about the size of a football stadium, I think the length is probably about the same as a football pitch and the width about the size of a football stadium. So it's, it's quite small considering it's 400,000 metres in the air. Now, if you were to reverse that and look at your favourite football stadium and raise up off the ground using Google Earth, I think you've probably figure out pretty quickly that you won't see it. Now, my brother-in-law's answer to that was, it's the only thing in the sky whizzing by. Um, to which, as I say, my response was, A, how can you see it? What's actually lighting it? And B, how can we see it at that height whizzing on by? So whether or not you two spy planes are actually what's up there, I think it's, it's, it's a nice theory. But in reality, NASA have got a lot more money and can put something else that runs on the same principles, i.e. the principles of flight, um, up at uh, maybe even a greater distance, maybe at 100,000 feet. Who knows? But it's certainly not at you know 400,000 metres. Um, otherwise, we simply wouldn't see it. There's plenty of stuff going by, and that's just one of them. Uh, it's not in space. That would be my argument. Now, Martin from... Uh, I don't think his channel's actually called Flat Earth British, but as I say, I've invited him on to have a chat. Although I've had lots of wonderful, you know, really clued up, fantastic guests on the show, I kind of want to have a chat with somebody who's maybe a little bit more green, especially as he seems to be encountering virtually identical situations to myself. So he, had, he did a show recently where he had a, a guest on, uh, to a degree, I think he was just a mate in the background, but he asked him what his proof of the globe was and the ISS was his answer. Now obviously your average Joe is not going to be tuning into the ISS watch and seeing the farcical nature that they have. It'll be more like what they describe which is that people pop into the ISS feed, the ISS live feed, the, the genuine one not the Globebusters one and stay there for five minutes and that's enough proof for them. Nobody sat dissecting it for two hours going hang on a second this doesn't quite look right. So Hopefully on Wednesday of this week, uh, Martin will agree to come on the show and have a little chat with me. If not, I'll probably end up doing my favourite moments from the first 10 shows and say as the, the calibre of guests has been superb. I hadn't you know, even dreamed of, of doing Flat Earth UK or interviewing people at all, let alone doing it and getting such astonishingly good guests on. Not that Martin won't be a fantastic guest, I'm sure he'll be absolutely superb, but I think he's, he's, he's in more of a similar boat to myself in terms of where he's at and what he's researching so it'd be nice to have a, a chin wag a chit chat uh, with martin on that show if he agrees if not tune into flat earth uk 10 for my favorite moments of the first 10 anyway i'll sign off on that note i've been nathan oakley the iss isn't real the earth is flat and i'll see you in the next video